I'm delighted to welcome today Dr. Barnsley Brown, who is uh, going to talk us through how to deal with overwhelm, or preferably avoid it in the first place, or if we have it, what to do with it. Um, you're president of the universe, stand-up comedian, and all round good egg. So welcome, Barnsley. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that, Elaine. Thank you. That's that's one of the best introductions I've ever had. <laughs> okay, so uh, where do we start? So uh, your doctorship, what is your doctorship in? You know, it's interesting. My, my PhD is in women's studies and literature. And sometimes people say to me, Barnsley, you have such an interesting career trajectory. And, you know, they get that look like, I don't get why you do what you do now, but the truth of the matter is I was writing and publishing about healing, about healing traditions in literature, Elaine. That's what I was talking about. So it was like I was theoretically and intellectually writing about this stuff. And then when I moved to Chapel Hill, I, I did my master's at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland, which was really cool. And I, I met a lot of people who were into healing, actual healing. And then I came back to UNC Chapel Hill, back home to North Carolina, thinking I was going to do my PhD. But truthfully, in addition to my PhD, I started studying Reiki. I started studying rebirthing. I started studying thought field therapy, which is an incredible form of tapping. A lot of people do EFT. I started studying all these methods of mind, body, spirit healing. And so it's like first I intellectually did it. And then I went to the healing part. Interesting. People normally do it the other way around, do the healing, then get interested in it and want to study more. So um, you're an upside down doctor. Wonderful. <laughs> yes. Well, I tell you, I had to get out of my head. That was a not a happy place to be. You know, so when we're talking about overwhelm and and one of the big counter ways to counteract overwhelm, which is creating joy in your life. Let me just say that, uh, you know, we want to focus on what gives us energy and we want to connect our heart and our head. And I was definitely living like a, a talking head at the, you know, wah, 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 wah. like Charlie Brown, wah, all, all the teachers. Wah, 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 wah. So how come you ended up in Scotland? I'm sure there's plenty of other places you could have done a master's oh, degree. Oh my how goodness. Come in that I ended up there because I think it was divinely appointed, but truthfully, I had applied to Duke, I had applied to, for graduate school, UNC, I had applied to University of London, I got in there as well, and to University of Edinburgh. And when I went to talk to my poetry mentor, who I just adored, Bert Hedin, he was my poetry mentor in undergrad, and I wrote a lot of poetry, right? When I went to talk to him, he said, you know, you need to go somewhere radically different and somewhere you haven't been. And so I ended up that summer actually going to volunteer in Molipololi, Botswana, Elaine, doing a project with Operation Crossroads Africa, and then came home, packed up, and went to Edinburgh, Scotland to do my master's there. And it was really because of my poetry mentor, because he was like, go, just go, do not go to graduate school here. And so I did my master's and then came back, you know, here. And the reason I, I really didn't want to leave Edinburgh, actually, I'll tell you that, Elaine, I did not want to leave. I loved it there. I got to do theater in the Fringe Festival. I got paid to do theater. I met interesting people. I went to film festivals. I wrote, you know, I graduated with honors, did all this stuff, published my poetry, did poetry reading, studied with Ann Stevenson, all this cool stuff. And the thing was their PhD did not include teaching. And I'm a teacher at heart. And all you do in the PhD is you read, 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 and you write. And that was not how my master's was. My master's had classes and reading. I'm a social person. I could not have survived in that cold place. I loved Edinburgh, it was cold, but you drink a lot of tea. I could not have survived there, just reading, reading, reading and not outputting my knowledge. And so I have to say, uh, coming back, you know, was a great decision, even though I cried for three months afterwards. <laughs> So, wait, so what, what year was this you did the master's in? 
Oh my goodness, it was 1989, right? I graduated from Wake Forest University in 88 and I finished my master's in 89. And I came back, did my PhD, finished in 96. Cool. Taught so my way through. <laughs> so what have you been doing since? Oh, thanks for asking, yes. Well, for a little while, I thought I wanted to stay in academia for a long while, actually. And I taught at Duke for a summer. I taught at Wake Forest University as a, as a pro visiting professor. And I taught at UNC Chapel Hill my last year. And then I realized, you know, this does not make me happy. This, this is about 75% what I want to do in the world. And that's not enough. And so I um, turned down the tenure track offer turned down the guy, Elaine, who'd come back to my doorstep saying, I'm sorry, I was confused. Can I have a second chance? I turned him down on the same day. This is, this is real. <laughs> this is a real story. People are like, are you kidding? No, I had nothing else to lose. I just turned him down, both of them down. And I started my own business, which is Spirited Solutions Professional Speaking and Coaching. And I offer Reiki trainings, which are transformational and the Reiki method of stress and pain relief. I offer the Make It Happen Mastermind in which we double, triple or more the income and the impact of big hearted entrepreneurs. And I also offer the Get Results Now laser individual coaching. So I have three major offerings that I do and I write books and I do improv just for fun. But I'll tell you after I made that decision line, I wanna say this because I, I feel like I should, I would cry on the, on the treadmill at the gym for three months after I made the decision to start my own business because it was scary and I didn't have another income. I had four rescue animals and it was me. I wasn't married and I, did, I didn't have an inheritance or anything like that. I had to make it. And so everything that I share now 22 years later with the big hearted people I work with is what I learned the hard way to get to six figures and and um, multiple this year, but it took me over a decade to get there because I tried to go it alone. So I'm on a mission that nobody will be like me, like I was the treadmill crier. I was the treadmill crier. I'm sure they were like, oh God, here she comes again. <laughs> it's so but it was hard. Yeah, you say about um, going it alone. A lot of people who start their own businesses have a big ego. They think they can do it on their own. Um, yes. You know, we've all we've all seen these people, and and you know, we've we've fallen foul ourselves. But the collaboration, I think, that is the way forward now, instead of the com the competition that most of us or many, you know, my generation certainly grew up with. We had to be the biggest, the best, the fastest. The big, you know, the biggest house, the fastest mm. car, whatever it was, the designer, mm. this, that, and the other mm. thing. What a load yeah. of nonsense! Um, so yeah. I think the the change towards more uh, collaboration and bringing joy into our work, whatever our work happens to be, I think is the right way. Although I do think some of the um, modern ways I think are a bit too uh, fluffy. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll see. You know, um, we've almost gone the other way completely. So I think somewhere in the middle, I think mm. is good. So you've obviously cracked it now. So tell us a bit about your um, your journey on how you, you know, what, what made you go from um, where you were with your four animals um, to where you are now with your, with your, you know, super, super successful career. Right. Well, before I do that, though, I want to, I think you made a really important point, which is that there is a lot of fluff out there and it's sort of this sort of mm. fake you know, yeah. I'm happy. And you especially see it on social media, which is one of the reasons I get on there and cry. I get on there and rant. I do what I feel like on social media, um, depending on what's going on in the world and what's going on in my life. Because, you know, the last few years have been so filled with grief for people. And I personally lost my brother and I lost my stepfather and all in the space of a little over a year. And so how do we, when we have, so much uh, loss, how do we bring ourselves back up? But we have to go through it. And I, I bet you preach that as well, Elaine, like we can't just suppress it, depress it, repress it, um, because then it's going to come out in some kind of uh, psychosomatic or non 
some kind of psychosomatic or somatic form. Yeah, so absolutely. I think it's really important. Yeah, it, it is really important to acknowledge uh, whatever the feeling is, whether it's happiness, sadness, joy, whatever it is, acknowledge it, be yes. aware of it, acknowledge it, but don't stay there if it's if it's a negative. So if it is grief, bereavement, whatever, we're not going to forget the people, we're not going to forget them. Mm -hmm. They'll always be in our hearts, but life mm -hmm. goes on. So it's it's a question of balance, and that's that balance is different for everybody, isn't it? It is. It's important, and you know, on those days that I have felt really sad. Do you know what I do? I ask myself the question, what would my brother want me to be doing with my life right now? And the answer I always get, because he had a great sense of humor, it was one of the ways we survived a really dysfunctional family uh, with an alcoholic, manic depressive father and a rageaholic mother was, that was humor, right? And uh, I can hear him just laughing and being like, you know, he had a sarcastic sense of humor. Oh, come on, just, you know, just do what you want, you know, life is short, do what you want. Uh, so I can kind of hear him saying things like that to me. And I ask, you know, would my stepfather be proud of how I'm conducting my life? And it always gets me out of bed, right? You know, it always gets me excited to, to, to move forward with my calling. And, you know, I think you touched on this too, Elaine, which is that work, is a four letter word in my vocabulary. Work is a four letter word, but calling our vocation, which comes from Latin vocari, which means vocation, a calling is a purpose. And people who lead purpose driven lives are proven to have better health, better joy, higher, higher level of positivity and you know, just uh, maybe not better relationships, but definitely uh, more joy. Mm, absolutely. And then the, the more joy we have, the higher our vibration and the more in flow we are and the more we succeed. It's not rocket science, is it? But so many people are going mm. through life in such a fast pace. They don't pause. They don't connect with themselves and, and what's around them. They're just so mm. like running on the treadmill over over um, their life and they become overwhelmed. So talk to us about overwhelm. Yes. Oh, yes. The treadmill. Um, well, overwhelm. Overwhelm usually comes when you are, and I'm just going to make a couple of points here that I actually have a free ebook for your people. So don't let me forget to offer that to them because they'll be able to read 30 pages about overwhelm, <laughs> which hopefully will not be overwhelming. It's actually a really fun, funny read, y'all. You can go to the loo and read it. Um, we want to make sure that how we're spending our time, our energy, our money, and our love slash focus, time, energy, money, and love slash focus, you choose the word you like, love or focus, we want to be spending them in alignment with our highest values. And so this is where people find that they're overwhelmed. It's when we're not in alignment with our highest values. And we're adding stuff onto our plate that we don't want. We don't want to eat it, so to speak. So why put it on our plate? So that's one of the main things that I work with people, first of all, is to, to actually articulate your highest values in your life and your business so you understand exactly what those are. For example, one of mine is fun. I love fun. I want fun in my life. Another is spirituality not religion. Religion is man-made. I want spirituality. I want people around me who are actually walking what they say they believe. I don't want crap. I don't want hypocrites. I want people walking a spiritual journey. And I don't care if they're, whatever their name for that energy is, source, Allah, whatever they call it, great spirit, as long as they are walking their values, that's what I want around me. So that's important to me. Kindness is also important to me. It's super important to me. And also the fact that all people matter. Everything in my life goes back to all people matter. All people deserve to have a voice and all people matter. So for example, given that, and health is also a huge thing for me. So let me say, if I'm spending my time on overworking 70, 80 hours a week or whatever, I don't do that. I work less than 30 um, usually like 20 or 25. Um, so if I do that, 
Elaine, I'm out of alignment and I'm going to be overwhelmed. And if let's say I want to be around people who are really walking their spiritual walk and I go to a really judgmental church where people are critical and there's homophobia and other phobias and it's like, you know, you need to be saved or you can't be here. If I go there, yeah, I'm just going to be real. If I go to that church, I'm going to be overwhelmed. Why? Because it's out of alignment with my highest values, which is that all people matter. All spiritual traditions have an element of truth in them. Mm. So that's just an example. And it's a great example. I love the I love the phrase "all people matter" because we've yes. been pitted against one another for for centuries. Not just in the last two years of nonsense, but um, you know, for centuries, you know, your your the religion, the color, um, the persuasion, you know, whatever it is, um, you know, conquer and divide type of um, uh, scenario. So all people matter. That just literally brings everybody in, doesn't it? I love that phrase. All people matter. And all voices are important. Everybody gets to have a voice. So, so much of, of my work is about, I'll say my, my heart's work is for all people to have a voice, but I have a special thing in my heart for animals because they can't talk to us. Mm. I mean, I do think they could communicate with us for sure, but they can't <laughs> say, you know, I'm hurting. I have a cancerous lump. You know, we've got to be attentive and also children. Also children and teenagers, you know, everyone gets to have a voice and uh, many do not. So I, I think uh, for me, that's, that's just, it's like a basic, a basic tenet of, of who I am on the planet. And, and actually, interestingly, Elaine, to go back to my, my former career as a professor, I studied and wrote about African-American literature. And I published in all this stuff, like the Oxford Companion to African-American Literature. I've published in the best, best journals about African-American literature out of Harvard, et cetera, as a graduate student, right, before I left academia. But every time I would go for a job interview, and, and it was a very tough, 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 tough job market with over 700 or a thousand people applying for each one. And 16 times I was in the top three and I would go and people would see my skin color, Elaine, and would say things like, well, how do you teach African-American literature as a white person? I actually had somebody say that to me. And do you know what I said, Elaine? <laughs> I didn't get the job. Well, this is probably why. I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, I just think it's so interesting that you assume that I'm white. Yes. Yeah. That's all I said. And then mm -hmm. I shut up and the person turned beet red and I didn't get the job, but you know, and uh, I also like to say things like, well, you don't have to be British to teach Shakespeare. Do you, you don't mm -hmm. have to be a British white male. Do you to teach Shakespeare? Do you have to be a gay american to teach walt whitman because he was gay and an american yeah yeah and and <laughs> our that's, great that's, american poet that's typical of, of society though isn't it we yeah. you, and humans the prejudgment uh, the assumptions yes. it happens all the time and even though we try not to make assumptions you know when somebody walks in a room instantly we have a view mm -hmm. on that person or what they're wearing or you know right. whatever um so but that's part so of the let's take condition. that point that you're making that's a great point that's a way to avoid overwhelm just stop judging people stop freaking judging people because every time you're judging people guess what you're judging yourself yeah, yeah. so just stop you want to be healthy and happy find the good in people look for the good yeah. Don't look for the crap because we all have crap. We all have the shadow side. You want to be happy. Look for what people are doing right. You want to be happy. Look for what you're doing right in your life. Yeah. Stop absolutely. looking at the ways you think you don't measure up or you think other people don't measure up. Yeah, you will absolutely. be miserable. 
spot on and it's like yeah. when when somebody comes into a room you know maybe notice that their hair looks nice or they've got a wearing a pretty color dress or or they've got a nice smart suit on or whatever and comment about it you know give, yes. give them compliments because everybody loves you made compliments. my day commenting yes. about my earrings yeah yeah <laughs> which were given to me by a friend i mean seriously and i have this unusual it actually goes together it does and it gives me joy so let yeah. me just say when we're talking about avoiding overwhelm get rid of clutter Take the clutter out of your head, which is judgment, negativity, yeah. trying to be perfect, trying to stay in control. Get that crap out, jettison the crap, and leave the good stuff, which is you are an important person. You matter. You have a calling. You are vital. You're the only one who carries that. What you have to give to the world, you're the only one who has it. Leave that. And then get rid of the clutter around. You can do this together. Get rid of the clutter around you. Release it to somebody who's going to use it, donate it, sell it on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, whatever, make some money, share it with the animals, rescue some animals, get it out of your space and only have in your space that which brings you joy. And in the same respect, do it with your clothes. Yeah. This top gives me joy. My daughter gave it to me. She helped me pick it out. It gives me joy. These earrings give me joy. All the art, which you can't really see, but all this art. I don't know. I'm afraid to shift my, can I show them? Like I have art everywhere in my oh, office, wow. nice. everywhere. All the art in my office gives me joy. So surround yourself with joy in the form of colors, textures, things that you like, mm -hmm. the scents you like the, you know, have a candle or have a diffuser. I have my um, essential oils over here and I diffuse those things that I need each day. I muscle test. What do I need today? And I use those particular oils, oils, you know, because most people, most people, Elaine, are waiting for somebody to come in and rescue them and make them happy. That's why romantic love is so messed up. You get to be happy. You get to be happy now, but it's up to you to do it. Yeah. It's up to each of us to do it, to put ourselves in the environments with the people, with the surroundings, with the thoughts that actually bring us joy. Health and, and happiness is an inside doing job, the work isn't it? Love. What did you say? Sorry? It's an inside job. Health and happiness is an inside job. It comes from within us. But unfortunately, a lot of people aren't aware of what's within us. They're so busy in the outside yes. world, people pleasing, gathering clutter whatever it is uh, living the fast-paced life they're not taking a step back they're not pausing they're not looking around them and they're certainly not looking inside of them either in our consumer-based societies yes and so i have to say um my daughter is half peruvian and my ex-husband is peruvian and i love my peruvian in-laws because this stuff just doesn't matter to them stuff right yeah. they don't have to have the latest greatest tv they don't have to have great cars. They have each other. And there could be 12 people in a little three bedroom apartment and everybody's having fun yeah. and enjoying. Um, and I could never even imagine, I shouldn't say this, but I, okay. I could never even imagine going to some of my family members' houses for 12, for 12 days. And that's having a separate room to myself. Why? Because it's just a different focus there's not that we're in this together kind of focus it's it's just it's just very different mm -hmm. so i believe that um actually you know one of my books book packages is get out of debt get on with your life every woman's guide to create prosperity with what you have right now and the whole tenet of this book elaine is that actually wealth the word wealth, and here you'll see my PhD, comes from Old English, wheel, W-E-A-L, which means well-being. Mm -hmm. yep. So wealth comes from the word well-being. And I don't care how much money you have. If you don't have well-being, look at all the stars who've committed suicide, for instance. Mm -hmm. If you don't have well-being, if you don't have a community to share the wealth that you have in every sense of that word, the wealth up here in your intellectual mm -hmm. capital, the wealth in your heart, the wealth of your, your environment, the wealth of your abilities, the wealth in your bank account. If you don't have people with whom to share that, you don't have wealth. 
Yeah. And if you don't have time, I, I know you keep bringing back that hamster wheel image. And I love that. I actually have a really funny thing. I wish I had gotten it out. It's a, it's a hamster wheel and it has batteries and it has a little hamster that runs on it. <laughs> and I like to take that to my presentations and set it up and say, is this you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Consumerism is crazy. You know, uh, the amount that we consume in, and I know you're in Portugal, but the amount that we consume in the United States is just unbelievable. And in my volunteer work in Peru and Guatemala, in Botswana, um, in Zimbabwe, I've, I've done a lot of volunteer trips in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, in my volunteer work, what I love seeing is like, there's a kid who will take a coat hanger, a wire coat hanger, and make a beautiful little um, pushable car out of a wire coat hanger. Such creativity and such resourcefulness and not greed, such just let's recycle it all. You know, well, let's recycle. This is going back to, to my childhood. I mean, I grew up with not very much and I didn't know we were poor until later on in life. Um, and then my mum explained how she'd managed and made ends meet and this kind of thing. Um, but we simply didn't have the things that we had today. So it was a combination of not having the things, but also we didn't have the Internet. We didn't have all this competition mm -hmm. and greed and biggest, best, fastest and all the rest of it. That The only way that was kind of um, seen was on the sporting field. So sports were was a lot bigger in my childhood than it, than it is mm -hmm. now in my life. But the clutter... The older we get, the more we gather, and it's 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 ridiculous. So I've I've came over to Portugal two years ago, and um, I've gone from a big six bedroom detached designer house to literally a few belongings in my car, and I the love it. release the relief of not having to worry about things. You know, um, I came down in a fancy car. Uh, which I no longer have, and I'm riding around in something that's far, far more practical for the life that I now live. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's no, you know, showing off and this, that and the other, but that's how I was indoctrinated in my, in my, you know, corporate working uh, mm -hmm. life in London. So when we change our environment as well, we kind of accommodate, and we kind of, it's like slipping back into who we are rather than trying to people please and to, to be something that we're not. And as you said earlier on, we're out of alignment when we're doing that. We're not within our purpose and our values. And basically we're living, as you pointed out, happiness is an inner job. When we are wanting to get the next best, it's because we aren't in touch with ourselves. Like I drive a car that I adore. I love my car and they're not making them anymore in the United States. Sadly, it's a European car. It's the, the Ford C-Max. It was actually created in Europe. It's a hybrid and I love my car, but it's, it's almost 10 years old and they aren't selling them anymore. Daggone it in this mm -hmm. country. Ford brought it over because they were trying to make their gas mileage look better. Okay. That's why the corporation brought it over. Right. But I, I love my car. It's perfect for me. Why would I get another one? I, it's just like, I don't care. I prefer to read and learn. I prefer to do spiritual studies. I prefer to connect with people. My word for this year is connect, mm -hmm. connect. And that's with other people and with myself. I do a lot of art right now. I'm hand painting these furniture things for an independent animal rescue auction to, to benefit animals. And that gives me joy. So that brings me actually to another point I really want to make Elaine. And that is if you want to feel happy, this is for your listeners. If you want to feel happy and you want to feel joy, find a cause that you care about. I care about animals and I care about children and teenagers find a cause you care about and give to it but don't just give your money give your time give things like i have been going through and finding all this fun jewelry from when my daughter was younger she's 15 now and i'm making these baskets up that there's one for like younger kids and there's one for teenagers with all this neat jewelry that was hers what was i going to do with this take it to goodwill no, I'm creating baskets and they're going to sell for a lot and they're going to feed a lot of cats and dogs and get them adopted. And it's been joyful putting them together. 
it's like I sit there and I just really enjoy it. I think about the kid who's going to look at this and say, oh, my God, look at all these cool things. Look at this. Mommy, look, I've got this. You know, you know me. I like my earring. <laughs> and, you you know, it's just kind of like I hear you about corporate wor wor work. I've never been in the corporate world, though I have spoken for a number of places like the Environmental Protection Agency and Nortel and some other corporations. I have been their speaker, the Institute of Supply Management, financial people. They loved me because I was so different from what they were used to. I've done that, but I have to admit my heart is really with solopreneurs who are saying, you know, I have in my heart something that I want to bring to the world. Like right now, a client of mine is creating a whole program for people who've experienced abuse, and it's an online program. I have another client who's just started her own educational business, working with Stones and Reiki with people in business. So interesting, with business owners. And she's also a social activist, so she teaches social activists how to take care of themselves in these educational trainings. Have another client who is an estate planning lawyer. And she has gone, she has actually more than, gosh, I figured it out. It's like more than 17 times her income, but her impact. And she is actually blind and she's creating estate plans for people who have disabled children and adult disabled children to make sure that they have what they need for the rest of their lives, even if something happens to their family members. And so all the people, just an example, these folks, all the people that I work with have a positive impact they want to create in the world. And that's their driving force. And they're joyful because they know that they're in touch with it. They're not living somebody else's definition of success. Mm. Yeah, that's so important, having a purpose. But so many people, they go through their life, Barnsley, without ever knowing what their purpose is. They're just so yes. busy on the hamster wheel, pleasing other yep. people, their family, their their spouses, uh, their, their, their bosses, whatever it is. I only did uh, corporate for 12 years in the middle. Um, uh, I've, I've always done my own thing, uh, apart from 12 years where things went wrong and, I'm, and um, I, I went into corporate. Um, but so many people never find their purpose. So yes. for these people, how do, they, how do they find their purpose? Where do they start? They work with me. <laughs> They do, Elaine, mm -hmm. because truthfully, the person I told you about who's yeah. the so social activist, for mm -hmm. instance, she started a beauty counter. Beauty counter is clean beauty. It it doesn't include 1,800 a carcinogenic items yeah. that are usually in most makeup, right? Mm -hmm. She started this right when the pandemic started. And it was something she was passionate about, but it still wasn't her heart's desire. So in her work with me for the past two years, we got to her heart's desire and she started it. And I'm happy to tell you that she made more than she's ever made in her life in the last couple of months. And she always was a social worker and did things like working at the Women's Center with nonprofits. She made more than she ever thought she'd make in the last two months. And she reached more people than she ever thought she'd make with this business. So the point being, you know, it doesn't have to be me, but I'm super good at that. That's my sweet spot is helping you figure it out because you got one life. You don't get a do over. Mm -hmm. Why the, mm, I was going to say a bad word. Why the mm, darn heck are you wasting your time? You'll never get your time back. So find somebody like me or connect with me. I do offer a complimentary 30 minute, 25 minute not 30, 25 minute session with people, but you have to do homework ahead of time, right? Because I only work with people who are gonna do the work, do the hard lifting, be willing to get outside their comfort zone. And it is outside comfort zone, isn't it, Elaine, yeah. when you start your own venture? And that is such a good point. I've I've turned three clients down recently. Um, mm -hmm. I'm refocusing on on what my, my aims and, and my higher value is and so on and so forth. And I, I've turned down three clients and it's scary, um, but I've I've now recognised my value and I'm not prepared yes. to work with people who aren't prepared to put skin in the game, as they say, for themselves. People expect me to give them a, um, a placebo pill that will make them better. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to roll your sleeves up. You have to do yep. the work. Um, I can I can identify what's wrong with them. I can give them a plan on how to get better. 
or avoid mm-hmm. being ill in the first place but i can't do yep. it for them they have to do it so yeah i'm glad to yes that. i i'm really happy you're saying that too because you know and that's one of the reasons i have people do homework before i give them my time in that session because i know if they're not even going to value themselves enough to do the homework before the complimentary session, they're never, we're never going to be a good match. <laughs> yeah, you've given me a good idea, actually. I'm going to give homework before I connect with people. Yes, I'm going to get you know, the homework in Lane, diary. It can be, it can be a food diary. It could be a, um, a video they have to watch and they do a food diary, but they must send that to you before you ever book the session because I don't know about you. I'm 56 now. I know I don't look it because I do Reiki every day. I've done it for 30 years on myself. That's my skincare, Reiki. Did y'all hear that? Yes. Yeah. And what I have to say is that it works. Yeah, it works, obviously. But I don't have time. I don't want to waste my time. As I am 56 now, I'm like, well, I plan to li- live because my daughter's 15. And by the way, I had her all naturally because I was in great health. All naturally at age 40. Um, yeah, it was an amazing birth because I had acupuncture I did Reiki every day I was weightlifting you know I was taking care of my body carefully probably more carefully than I am now to be honest yes um I've gotten a little bit of that middle age bulge thing going on Elaine and you know I've been doing a cleanse and you know well so uh the point is that um what was the point I just missed my point um, where was that before life's, life's too short shit happens life's too short it. get over it have joy get over have it purpose. Get you, find that daggone purpose but don't try to do it alone you don't have to do it alone doing it alone does not work unless you want to just get to the end of your life and say oh wow you know i wish i'd done this earlier well that's what a good coach or mentor does they're going to get you where you want to go super fast without all your hair falling out you know And so just don't try to do it alone. And, and that's why I always say to my clients, you know, I give you what I wish I'd had those Mm -hmm. first years of my business. Um, I wish I had had someone like me now at that time, because then I would have gotten where I am now so much faster, Mm -hmm. but it's all good. Right. Because I was meant to go through that journey to do what I do now. Yeah, exactly. Nothing's nothing's wasted is it everything that we do has a purpose we can't necessarily know what it is at the time but when we look back and we stitch our life together you can see how this thing here linked with that thing there and so on yeah nothing is wasted so everything there's a whole there's a whole weaving that we can't really see but the universe definitely sees it and when we one of my favorite totem animals in medicine in animal medicine is the hawk Mm -hmm. and the message of the hawk is go take go up in your life right look at your life from above take a view from above not from where you are in it Mm -hmm. right now in this in maybe a challenge or a a problem if you want to call it that but go up above Mm -hmm. and look at the trajectory look at how things are moving together and ask yourself what is that here for what is it meant to gift me with? And if you do that, you'll be happy and joyful, you know, no matter what it is. I'll, can I give your people one real quick assignment, coaching assignment? Please, yes. Please. Okay. I'm going to give you a coaching assignment. That's a coaching me. It's one of my favorite things. If you want to shift anything in your life, here's what you do. You write at the top and let's just say, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. Like I'm the heaviest I've ever been. Like, I just put it out there. I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my life. And so I put at the top, and I was feeling kind of bad about that. But my cholesterol is great. My A1C, everything is fantastic. All my blood work is fantastic. My energy is great. Well, but I put, but I was feeling bad about it. And so I put at the top of this thing, the reason I'm having the experience of being the heaviest I've been in my life is so that I can learn. So you're going to put the challenge there. The reason I'm having this experience is so that I can learn and then you put your colon, right? Not your organ, the two mm-hmm. dots, right? Yeah. And you're going to write stuff, 12 things beneath that, that are positive. So for example, one of the biggest ones that came out of this exercise when I did it, Elaine, was so that I can learn to love myself unconditionally as mm-hmm. God loves me. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And 
so I can learn that health isn't necessarily your weight. It's a combination of everything. Um, and there were a lot of others that I put, but it allowed me to really see so that I can relate to other people who are feeling negative about their bodies and find a way for us to love our bodies just as they are. Yeah. So all this great stuff came out of it. So you just put at the top, the challenge, the reason I'm having the experience of having no money in my bank account or whatever the challenge is, mm -hmm. the reason I'm having the experience of divorcing is so that I can learn. And then you're going to list 12 things. Um, and this is such a powerful reframing exercise. You can take it for anything in your business, anything in your life. And if you will do this, guess what? You will shift your mind and you'll begin to see from that hawk's eye view why this is there and what it's there to serve you with. Mm -hmm. And it is there to serve you. The universe is for you. The universe is not against you. Everything is working together for your good. However, if you are in a space of, oh, this is so horrible, blah, 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 you will never be able to see the good. So that's why we go up like the hawk, fly up there, fly people, fly, fly. I'm being goofy. Is that improv theater coming out? Fly with mm -hmm. me, Elaine, fly. She's, she's like, I'm not gonna fly. My future fly self, <laughs> so, so see, see your future self. So rise up, look rise ahead, up. see your future self. Yes, see your future self because you are becoming it now and and see that see yourself as you are god doesn't make junk the universe doesn't make junk you are perfect you are perfectly imperfect and lovable just as you are that's one of my favorite affirmations i'm perfectly imperfect and lovable just as i am that's excellent i love that i love that i, I say to people throw the weighing scales away who cares what number is on there it's how mm. you feel it's how your health is your body tells you if you're overweight yeah. you're underweight whatever it is and your body will adjust if you give your body yes. the right environment it will adjust itself it will heal itself it's not rocket science but we're not taught all this stuff so, and you know, Elaine, I, I just have to tell you that years ago I had irritable bowel syndrome. I'm just putting it out there here for people to know. And I was so ill and I was in graduate school and I got down to about 80 pounds lighter than I am now. I was skinny, right? Skinny, skinny for the first time in my life. And I felt like crap. I felt awful. My body did not feel good. And so it, 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 like you say, it's not necessarily, you know, it's like people who have an eating disorder and they just, you know, destroy their bodies that way um, or die from it. I had a number of students who had eating disorders like bulimia. Mm. I had a roommate who had bulimia in, in college, actually, my freshman year. And I remember when she told me, she's like, after I eat, don't let me go to the bathroom. And I was like, why? And she said, um, because I have bulimia. And I was like, oh, and, you know, we have so much pressure as women to continue to look gorgeous and and be a certain size and everything uh, throughout our lives and not have gray hair and not do this and that and not have wrinkles. And it's just stupid because guess what? Guys are having their paunch paunches, 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 mm -hmm. and they've got their gray hair. And guess what people say about them? Oh, he's so distinguished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Years ago, I was told never to take advice from somebody unless they had gray hair, because with the gray hair <laughs> comes wisdom. With the gray hair mm -hmm. comes experience. And on yes. and on. And now wrinkles. I love your gray hair. hair. I love my gray hair as, as well. Uh, before my cancer, I, I used to uh, color my hair red. Um, and then after ah. I, I decided that I was just going to leave it naturally. So, um, so there it. we are. Marvellous. So I'm in transition. Mm -hmm. I'm in transition with mine. I'm trying to figure out what to do. <laughs> okay. Ask your body. Do muscle testing. You'll get the answer. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it I'm going to let my daughter gorgeous. experiment on it. She's going to do biolage tonight. We're going to oh. do like biolage and she's going to do highlights it's going to be fun i'm gonna let her i'm gonna be her getty person okay you have she to loves post, to do hair post on uh on uh, social media see see what results we get yeah hopefully i won't look like this. a carrot head <laughs> <laughs> okay so barnsley how do people get hold of you 
Oh, great question. So on Facebook, you can find me, Barnsley Brown in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Um, and actually, I think it's facebook.com forward slash Dr. Barnsley. And is that right? It's either Dr. Barnsley or Dr. Barnsley Brown. And you can message me there because I love Facebook Messenger. And you can also go to my website, which is www.spirited, which is S-P-I-R-I-T-E-D. And then there's a dash, not an underscore, mm -hmm. solutions, S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S.com. And grab your book there, your free book, How to Overcome Overwhelm in Seven Easy Steps. And like I said, it's a fun read. You can take it to the loo. You'll be laughing in the loo. They'll be wondering about you. And you'll have new things that you can do to overcome overwhelm so that you can get off that hamster wheel. And so you can reclaim your joy. And I like to say to people, that report will give you two or more hours back every day for who and what you love. So you can't afford not to go get your freebie, right? Brilliant. www.spirited-solutions.com. Brilliant. I shall be there straight after we finish this. Recording. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Barnsley, for your time today. And um, have a wonderful rest of the day. And uh, I shall be off to spirited-solutions.com very shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. I have really enjoyed our conversation. And I just appreciate the work that you're doing with people to really help them have health on all levels. It's, it's very important. I try my best and it's uh, honouring my mother as well because I promised her before she died um, as I recovered from stage four cancer that I would tell everybody how they could avoid it in the first place or if they have it how they can reverse it so I'm doing I'm doing what I can and I'm um, having great joy in the process so thank you. That's that's such an amazing amazing story and testimony to what is possible our bodies want to heal they want to heal they don't want to be in a state of disrepair. Absolutely spot on. Yeah. Take care, Dr. Barnsley-Brown. Thank you. Bye.